So this week's video. Hang on, it's raining. So this week's video. Hang on, cut, cut, cut. It's raining. It's raining again. It's raining again. So this week's vi video. So I can't, I can't do this umbrella. This is it's just ridiculous. Uh, where's my umbrella holder? So in this video, we're going to be looking at some results from winter feeding, how the costier treatment went, and I've just fucked the pond, and why. And by the magic of YouTube, I'm waiting for endless days. <laughs> I've managed to find a day with the sun out. And in the time it's taken for the, get the blooming sun to come out, and it's out of fringes today, it's really nice and warm at, uh, in Stoke-on-Trent, which it always is. <laughs> Not all the time. Got the seating out, mowing the lawns, a pressure wash the side. Oh, I tell you, I've been a busy bunny waiting for things to happen. So, in the time of me doing the thirsty bit where it was raining and we had to get my assistant to hold the brolly for me, we, uh, <laughs> um, so all the things happened in the pond. In the last video, you saw that we had Costia, so stuck in some FNG and uh, got that sorted. Then the fish started flashing again. I was waiting for the sun to come out. So, <sighs> scraped again and found fluke so it's usually in my in my experience it's usually been fluke and then costia follows but this time it's been the other way around this year where i've had costia and then the fluke have followed so away it goes so is this which is what i used last time the the Lernix pro stuff is it still the the go-to for me in my pond to get rid of fluke so i've done dosed this this pond has been dosed and uh, we've got to wait for seven days, see what happens. It says you can redose after 14 days, but last time it only kind of took seven days to do, uh, and then away we went from there. So I'm crossing my fingers that that's still the place to go to because I tried a number of other products. Uh, I think we had Fluke S, we had Fluke M, we had a number of different other products that didn't quite cut it for me and didn't get rid of the nasties in my pond. So I'm hoping that that, that Lunox, Lunox Pro will do it. So. Let's get on with other things and see what happens. That's alright, he's not dead, he's just like he's lying in the sun. <laughs> I keep moving him in the shade actually, because he gets fed up with him in a dark chocolatey dog. Anyways, so Costia, how did we do with Costia? What result? The FM and G stuck in the pond, did it, I changed or, or added another dose after five days, not seven, I did an early one because it said between five and seven days. So I did three doses each after five days. And yeah, pretty good. However, we then pick up with something else. We pick up with the Fluke. So of course we've dosed with Linux Pro now. Uh, we've got to wait and see what happens with that and see how that goes. But apart from that, Costia, ka-ching, tick. I'll be over to menu, Majesty. Just busy on here. Feeding over winter, fantastic stuff. Yes, I was quite impressed with how the feeding over winter went. We, I decided to feed, I think a dozen or so videos ago, can't remember. We, I said that I was gonna try to feed under 10 degrees, because I've always said 10 degrees, I stopped feeding. And then a lot of people were saying, yeah, have you never tried it? And you can't knock it till you've tried it. But is it gonna affect the fish health and so on and so forth? So I looked into it and yeah, there is a product, Aquasource, all seasons that you can feed and it's designed to feed the fish down to around about eight degrees. Um, however, uh, because it's quite a lifestyle and I wanted to try things, I went below eight degrees. So at one point we were at 6.5, woke up in the morning, fish were at the window, wanted some feed, I had a small handful of feed, put it in the pond, guzzled that down, didn't feed them again for two days no effect on the fish so that was interesting how low you can go down but again how how low do you go down before it becomes not dangerous or does it become a problem or what i have no idea so i will do this next year i'll be feeding my fish throughout the winter period if they come up for some food i should get a handful of food and i shall feed them the aquasauce all seasons over winter because i feel that they've come out of winter into spring with a little bit more energy you know, before the past, they've just been lying on the sides and they've been dead lethargic because they haven't eaten since like October, all the way through to almost March. But now the temperatures are up, well, we're talking 15 degrees nearly now, which is a lot better. So yes, for me, feeding over winter, yes I will, and I shall feed under 10 degrees. I've fed down to 6.5. Would I do that again? 
I tried it and it didn't fail, so I probably will. Comment below. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely down to eight because the food I was using, the Equisauce All Seasons, was designed to go all the way down to eight degrees. M uh, yeah, eight degrees. So I fucked the pond, and why did I do that? Okay, anyway, got me water conditioner. Uh, the reason I did it the other day, it's another, it's another benefit to put in water conditioners or replacing minerals and, and so on and so forth in your pond when you're doing treatments. Now I found with this is that after you deal with a parasite treatment, if I fuck the pond and do a dose, <laughs> I know he's behind me. He's cool. Uh, he, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> after a parasite treatment, my fish are usually a little bit down and okay, they've been, you know, <clears throat> had chemicals in the pond and they're not brilliant. But as soon as I find, if I, if I put a larger dose of fog into my pond, it seems to pick them up a little bit. When I did the Costia treatment, you know, they came out of there and they'd had the UV off and I've been banging those chemicals in every five days. And they, the fish were on the bottom and they were kind of, do, do they come up for food? So I just chucked a, a, de a, a larger dose of that in, of my fucking, and it picked them up a little bit, which is fantastic. So yeah, it might be something to just keep in mind. That if you can find something, just give them a bit of prep up. Uh, I've found that this, you know, comment below if, if, if you think that's a load of whatever, then uh, by all means comment below. But I've found if I do that after I do a treatment for, for parasites, it seems to pick the fish up a little bit. Can't knock it till you've tried it. School day. Anyway, where was I? Fuck, I'll go explain. Here's an interesting one for you. A friend of mine called me the other day, his son and his wife have just bought themselves a, a new house. Uh, moved into the house and found they had a pond in the back garden with, but they weren't sure about the fish that were in it, or even if there was any fish in it, because it was very green. So Andy, would you pop over and have a quick look and give them, you know, tell them what it is and see what kind of fish you got in there. So I was expecting, <laughs> I was expecting sort of a little corner placed in the ground pond with a couple of goldfish in, maybe the odd frog hanging about. No, we've got this. Massive uh, swimming pool. Those ones, you, the swimming pools you can buy with the solid sides. Uh, <laughs> complete with ladders that was actually sunk into the ground. So this thing is sort of like four to five foot deep, four foot deep if you had, uh, if it was full of water, uh, 20 odd foot long, 12 foot wide, mahusive. So I asked where the fish were and they said, well, they're there. Where? There. The, it, it, the whole thing was full of fry. Apparently what happened was the, the people before had a lot of, bigger fish in there and the husband passed away unfortunately so the, the the wife didn't really know what to do with them she was moving out anyway because the house was too big now she was on her own and uh, she, apparently she sold all the, the larger fish to somebody else so the, all the larger fish had gone but they'd left behind all the fry and we're talking you know fry this big yeah about no bigger than that maybe but there was one and it looked like a tench but it kind of appeared and disappeared, appeared and disappeared, and I couldn't really work out what it was. The water, as you can see, was like pea soup. Uh, did some water parameters, everything was fine, apart from the pH, which was through the ceiling. So we looked for, I looked for how to, how, how to start, because nothing was happening, it was just sitting there, just stagnating water in this, in this swimming pool compound. Uh, couldn't find a filter anywhere, and then all of a sudden I tripped over, <laughs> tripped over. <laughs> A, a, a bead filter that was just sitting next to the pond with no lid on it. So couldn't find the lid anywhere. Looked for a, 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 a filter system, couldn't find anything. The pump was this. I've never seen one of them pumps. If anybody's seen one of them before, you know what to do. Comment below. Um, the UV system was only a 16 watt UV. This small, how the heck that's been covering a pond that size, I have no idea. So we spent, I must have spent a couple of hours just sort of hunting the garden, trying to find stuff 
Uh, I mean, some of the fish in there must have been quite big because they had a measure, you know, the, the large measuring bowls that you can get for fish that are going to be sort of four foot long. You know, they had one of them in the back there. So how big these fish would have been in there, I have no idea. And without a fish filter system, how the heck they survived is another thing. You know, I kind of said, have you still got, are you still in contact with the owner before? No, no idea. Don't even know, you know, no idea where she moved on to, so we can't contact her. So this is, that's going to be an interesting one because I'm going to obviously speak to my supplier, uh, Steve at Pencoy, stuck on Trent, cracking bloke, cracking area, go and visit his Facebook site, open the weekends, 10 to 4. Promote. Um, so I'm going to speak to Steve and see if there's anything we can do with what we've got, you know, this sunken swimming pool with a pump that we sort of, we, we pressed go on it and it made a noise and then turned itself off, so it must be seized. Um, but yeah, it was dead interesting, all this stuff and the little teeny weeny little tiddlers. And I said, we've got to be kind of careful because if we kick that pump in, I don't know how where the, in, out, the outlet is because, it, you know, it might just suck all the fish up and then you've got them going through your pump and they got like, I don't know. But anyway, luckily we didn't get the pump kicked in, so uh, no dechlorinators. <laughs> the list goes on. So anyway, we're going to see. We're going to see what we can do potentially. You know, they said we'd like to keep it. If it's got to go, it's got to go. So I thought that'd be nice. If if we could do something with it, that'd be ace. And we'll, I'll show you on here as and when it goes on. So that's maybe, maybe, a future video. We'll, I'll keep you in touch with that one because uh, I, I don't know what we can do with it. That where they can afford. Because don't forget, they've only just bought the house. So I don't think they're looking to be spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on stuff, filter, UV, air, you know, things that need doing. You know, may even need a retro bottom drain putting in. I couldn't see the bottom, so I don't know what was in there already. So there's, it was dead exciting. It was dead, you know, it was dead cool to go and have a look and, and see what this pool had done, but we can't contact anybody. So, so anyway, we keep in touch with that one. I don't know about you lot, but I am really enjoying being able to stand here now in a t-shirt, watching the fish float around, eating and enjoying the warmer temperatures. I think it's the moments like this, I kind of, this is why I do what I do in this hobby. You know, it's something that, just acing it, you could sit here for eight hours just watching your fish floating around. Anyways, if you want to see how I dealt with the fluke last time, you need to click this video here and it'll show you how I did a fl full fluke with the LearnX Pro. And then click here if you haven't subscribed yet. Now we've got a very important guest to get back to. Very patiently waiting there for his cheesy oat cakes with a sausage. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. I don't know, either quick on lifestyle. <laughs>